Communications Authority of Kenya. Connecting Kenyans continues and next I am currently in Enkutoto in Narrow County Tunapigia kesho kutwa ndio sasa kufuna sasa tatana nao watajipanga tu amkie safari hata unasahausa ngombe yako kwa WhatsApp pesa nenge kwa simu yako Residents of Mbarbal in Kajiado County had to walk long distances just to make a simple phone call Mambo ya poaching ilikuwa ilikuwa saidi ilikuwa juu pande Since the fund came into place we are not happy with the speed of implementation. We are confident to be able to move forward with a faster pace in the next phase. Warm greetings from Chams Media. Welcome to the show. And today we pitch tent in Kajado and Narok. I'm your host Alex Chamwada and as usual we begin with our fact sheet segment. Kenya's ICT sector has continued to register tremendous growth over the past years. According to Economic Survey 2019 edition, the sector expanded by 12.9% in 2018, and this was mainly contributed by expansion of the digital economy, which includes mobile telephony, uptake of e-commerce, and penetration of internet. And did you know that as at 31st March 2019, the number of active mobile subscriptions in the country stood at 51 million, up from 44.1 million in March 2018. During the third quarter of the 2018-2019 financial year, Safaricom PLC posted a market share of 62.4% in mobile subscriptions down from 63.3% registered in the previous quarter. On the other hand, Airtel Networks Limited gained 2.7 percentage points to post a market share of 26.1%. Telcom Kenya Limited's market share dropped to 7.9% from 9.0% reported in the previous quarter. Similarly, FinServe Africa Limited, which is a subsidiary of Equity Group Holdings Limited, lost 0.8 percentage points to register a market share of 3.4 percent. Mobile Pay Limited market share remained unchanged from last quarter at 0.2 percent. And that's our fact sheet. My name is Lavenda Amunga. I am currently in Enkutoto in Naro County and as you can see, there's a lot of buying and selling that is currently taking place with buyers coming from as far as Nairobi, Kericho, Bomet and even Kisi. This is as a result of the improved communication network that has eased the way residents here carry out business. This is Silao Oletuarari's farm. Today is market day for him and as mentioned, Traders have arrived from all over the country. Silao is a well-known farmer in Enkutoto. He has been farming all his life. He owns two and a half acres here in Enkutoto and together with his wife Jacqueline, run a successful farming business. However, Silao and Jacqueline have recently observed a steady increase in sales. This, they say, is all thanks to the new communication must that has transformed how they conduct their business. Ketaka ni use hii mali yangu, unapikia mwenye unanunua, kutaka tericho, kutaka kisumu, kutaka bomet, una yuko maasiliano kabisa. Silao 
ni kama safari kwa mwami turaisisha sa, kabisa. Samani ulikuwa tu na batisha juu nyanyi na sa, ikaifa, ukose basi mawasiliano, utakaa tu siyaribiki. Nowadays, nimekuwa ni raisi juu, tunawasiliana na wawo kabla wajatoka, unawalesea tu fisuri ni siku fulani njo, njo tutachuna na wawo watamukia mapema. Jo, saya, kama sasa hii biyahara inikuwa raisi sana saidi yetu. Hai kitamba sana tulikuwa tunasumbuka sababu na muka tu naanza kuja mbaka hapa kuja kubadisha uwane kama utasabata. Lakini na hote isi sababu ya network, anyawo tunafulaya, unabiga simu, unakuja unabata kuna kamsiko kako tayali, unabeba unaenda. Sipotezi pesa sababu, sikuji kusunguka na gari na mafuta kutafuta mzigo, na kuja tu direct, maka kwa sama na bata mzigo, unabeba naenda. Silao says that from his farm, he is able to make a profit of over 1 million shillings in just three months. And as we spoke, we were even interrupted by a call from one of his business associates. Hello? Oh? Hey! Hey, Bajira! Sawa, asena haya mwaro ni mo. Eee, e, ya ya. Inaona hiyo network na saidia sana sana na njia mingi. Apart from easing business, the new communication must has also provided employment opportunities. Ninipatia kasi, yu mimi ninakaa tu hapo, ninaishi tu hapo kwa ploto ya karibu na hiyo bosta. Sana nilikaa tu hapo, walipo ansa kujanga hiyo, sana mimi njoo nilikuwa niwapikia wa watu wao wa kasi chakula. Sana ninafanya huku safari kwa wana nilipa fisuri. Mimi njoo ninaibia bakifungua ya hapo, mimi njoo security wa huku. And it is not just the Tuwararis who are benefiting. Tukuisi mambo mingi sana, unafonywa kwa embesa, unalipo kwa embesa, hata unasawusa ngombe yako, kwa WhatsApp pesa nenge kwa simu yako. Hata siku isi mchungaji, ula anachunga ngombe akipotea, anapika simu nyumbani, kujeni munisaidia ngombe fulani amepotea. Ame Ama simba akikula ngombe, tunapikiwa simu, mkuje tuangalie, tukuje tusaidio. Sasa amelete utafauti kubwa sana. The communication network has even addressed the issue of insecurity in the area. Tukiangalia manena ya uhalifu, imepungua katawafu, ni wakati tulipata communication. Haya ya kaisha. Samani tulikuwa tulikifuna, mtu tuwa kujua umefuna, umepata kisipesa kidoku unamiwa usuku kwa nyumba yako. Unambiwa lete hile milioni moja ulitoa. Saa hii awezi bata, juu saizi yako kwa embesa. From Nkutoto, we head to Mbarbal. Mbarbal's ablocation is found in Kajiado County, approximately 140 kilometers from Nairobi. Residents of Mbarbal largely practice livestock farming. And it is here that the newly installed communication mast is located. When we arrived, we met up with Geoffrey Koikai, who warmly welcomed us to his homestead. Kodi, nango. Wow. Papa kuna waleo bal. Na una winda bado. Oh, eh si windi, lakini na jikinga nae. He even offered us a cup of tea. Wakati huo tulikuwa na magunjo huku wakuku na umospitali. Inabidi mtu wamekwenjeka na bebo kwa mashuka hadi huko hospitali. Mbayo ni mbali niwe wachache walifika alafu wengi walikufia nchiaji. Sasa siku hizi mekua flexible hata mtu wakikwenjeka kidogo ni kuhita tu piki piki ya magari. Takuwa mefika hapa. Kitu kingine, imeleta maendeleo kabisa. Maendeleo imekuja kabisa. Change, big change. Kwa sababu, tare kumi na tatu ijimamosi, nilikuwa uh, ile interview ya, ya census, pale uh, Kiserian, Ajam. Na nilipata ujumbe usiku saa nne ya usiku. Hakuomba natakikana saa tatu ijimamosi kise, Kiserian. Ambayo wakati wa atukuwa na hii uh, communication, atukuwa tunapata na ujumbe kama hizo. And we were able to witness the effectiveness of the improved network when we received word that the chief was looking for us. Ulipo ingia, mi nilipigiwa simu ya kuamba kuna watu strange. Ambaya hatujiwa nafanya nini. Hatujiwa kama ni maburuka sa ya mashamba. Unajua area bado ikuwa na shida ya mashamba. So wakiwana mutu ambayo siwa area hiyo, mbaga nijulisha ya kuamba kuna mutu, hapa na hatujiwa natafuta nini. Utuambia tufanya nini. Mamba ya poaching ilikuwa, ilikuwa saidi, ilikuwa juu pandei. Kwa sababu ya communication vile imeingia, 
unaambiwa ni nini inaendelea hata ikionekana pocha hata ikionekana wagaidi wote aina yote ya mtu ambaye haistahili uninapigiwa tu simu ya kwamba iko mtu hapa ambaye tunaogopa iko kitu hapa ambaye imetendeka alafu sasa tunaanza kufuatilia and when it comes to matters education Embarbal Primary School which has a population of over 200 pupils has seen the importance of proper communication before the construction of that booster there was a lot of difficulties in communication running the school affair was also difficult we cannot even assess some of the services because maybe we did not hear or we didn't get information in time so now we are able to communicate in time and we are able to get all the information and the feedback. In just a year, the economy of both Enkutoto and Embarbal sublocations have seen a tremendous growth with over 6,500 people now connected. And according to the residents, life has changed for the better. This phone, just simply, network, in a whole community. Sasa wakati tumiapata hii communication ya safari kwa msasa, ukiwa ndani ya bedroom yako unafanya kila kitu unafanya transaction unafanya biashara sasa ameleta changes mingi sana within our community let us now take a moment to compare and contrast just what does it mean for those in areas that are not connected yes olopinyo village in kajado east constituency is one of the areas that are in dire need of network and you may be wondering what is happening here this is the only spot where phones ring. Sasa saa hii inakuja ikipotea kidogo tu. Ndio tunaweka juu ya miti, inakuja ikipotea. Sasa ukiwa na na simu huwezi kaa naye kwa sababu huwezi kupata network. Baba uweke juu ya miti. Uende ufanye kazi ukuje uone nani alipika hiyo simu. Ndio sasa uanze kutafuta. Kama una unapeleka police call mu. Juu huwezi kaa hapo mtana msimu ukiongoje ukijue simu. Hivi ilo shida tuko naye sana sana ni network. Hata mtu akigonjeka kama si mtu utatuma utatoka uende mbali ndio uende upike simu ndio usaidike. Ironically, this tree serves the purpose of a must or call it a locally made booster. Hello. Tumetoka more than 3 kilometers kuja hapa. So as they go on with their daily chores, the area residents pray that service providers will consider boosting the network here. Tuko na wizi wizi hapa. Na hakuna vile unasasuia wizi kama kama tungekuwa na network kitu ikipotea huku unaweza unaweza pigia watu na upate usaidizi. Vile vile mgonjwa tukipata hakuna vile unasasaidika mpaka utoke wewe mwenyewe na mguu uende utafute gari ama utafute usaidizi mahali mengine sababu hatuna network. Thank you Michael for that comprehensive report. We now take a short break. When we return, has the Universal Service Fund achieved its objectives? Since the fund came into place, we are not happy with the speed of implementation. We are confident to be able to move forward with a faster pace in the next phase. You are watching the Chamwada Report. Brought to you by the Communications Authority of Kenya. Welcome back. This is the third episode of our continuing series, Connecting Kenyans. Time now to reflect. Has the Universal Service Fund achieved its objectives? The Voice Infrastructure and Services Project, targeted to connect 2.6 million Kenyans to mobile network coverage, Phase 1 being implemented in 78 GAP sublocations covers 320,000 people. This implies the GAP has been reduced by 12.3%. And this is the tech of Telcom Kenya, one of the service providers that are participating in this phase of the project on the impact so far. Enlarging your reach is a plus for, for our brand. That's number one. Number two is that when you see that out of the 13 sites that we built, 40% of them are actually viable. When we look at the traffic that we are, we are getting out of it, it's nearly equivalent to 50% of our sites in terms of uh, traffic. So that is something that you would not have known, that there is an opportunity 
even in remote areas like uh, the ones we have gone to. Indeed, the main objective of the Universal Service Fund is to promote communications infrastructure and services rollout in rural, remote and underserved areas. You may have coverage, but then the coverage ends at a particular point. So what we are doing now is extension coverage, going deeper into the areas to ensure that everyone um, is covered. And by that, Safaricom is a leading company in terms of rolling out the USF services to date. And uh, we are the ones who have shown a very good track record of completing the sites that have been allocated to us. And we have reported back to the USF and said, you give us 105 sites, here are 105 sites that we have constructed. However, Dr. Alex Gakuru, a technology rights defender, says the pace at which the projects are being implemented is worrying. I get a sense that that huge fund has been hemorrhaging and the whole amount of money which we have really shown is humongous, is in billions over the years, has just gone all back to the operators. Therefore, that's why the fund is failing in achieving its set objectives. So there's need to rethink the entire operationalization of the fund. The fund, I must say, is good because of the intent and the purpose, mm -hmm. but the manner in which it has been rolled out is absolutely, absolutely uh, worrying. And it's actually, I mean, to say the least. In a public institution, everything has to be done according to procedure. So it's a step-by-step -step process. First, we had to engage with the industry, the operators, to even be able to correct the money. So the process of first even reaching the point where we could correct the money wasn't automatic. It was a process. We had to form committees, have engagement meetings, and finally reach a point of agreement. And that's when the industry started to contribute. So. It's all that process because it involves a lot of people. We needed that kind of uh, engagement that allows everybody to come in and have their view. And that's the only way we could be able to correct the money. Now, once we had the money, then with the access gap study is to start implementing. But you can't do all of that at a go. So we, would, we planned to do it in phases. The people that we went to were also fighting back. It is only the other day that we also, we were able to negotiate with the people of Trukana to be able to put a station there. They wanted water instead. So those practical elements that we were going through could not have allowed us to move faster than what we have done. And this is the position of the National Assembly Committee on Communication, Information and Innovation whose chairman is Marakwet West MP William Kisang. Since the fund came into place, we are not happy with the speed of implementation. It's like less than 10% of the funds have been used because they still have over 7 billion in the bank and we have some serious, serious underserved areas in the country. In fact, what we thought was a prior priority was to give access, especially uh, on mobile access. A study that we carried out showed that if we needed to meet our communication gaps in the country, we would require 250 billion Kenya shillings. So what is, what is, uh, what is 5 billion? Because already, uh, even if we are talking about 9 billion, we have committed three to phase one of the project. So what money is remaining there? It appears like there is a lot of money, but all that money is committed. Actually, I wouldn't say there is any money because when you look at the plan and the money, the money is not enough to cover the plan. We are actually expecting that every year we will be correcting more so that by the five-year time we will be able to implement all the projects because the money is matched by the plan. There is, it's not that much because it's all committed. Some of it is already spent. It's only maybe it's not been paid because of maybe final inspections, quality assurance tests that are remaining, and once they are done, it will be paid. That's not even our money. Over half of that money is already spent because it's for the first phase of the project. And the next is all committed in the budget for the next year and the next two years. So there is basically no money. The other objective of the Universal Service Fund is to facilitate development of and access to a wider range of local and relevant content. Other than having KUSA, which is really an award for the broadcasters, and it's welcome, but in terms of what the fund was meant to do as USF, 
I have absolutely seen, and there's a lot of hue and cry in the industry, especially among the young, uh, unemployed, self-employed youth in that sector. In our plan, the local content wasn't the immediate. We focused first on the voice and the education broadband project for schools connectivity as a priority. The content is, the ne is an area that we are going to be looking at next. In our five-year plan, it comes in the third. So we are going to be looking at, at it as well. But we wanted first to address the most urgent gaps. So the Universal Service Fund projects are only at phase one, and observers say implementation should be much faster as stakeholders look forward to achievements of all the objectives, including enhancing availability of communication services to persons with disabilities, women and other vulnerable groups, as well as the general expansion of communication services to schools, health facilities, and other organizations serving public needs. If we can have all the remaining Kenyans connected and can be able to communicate, I'm happy to see that even people in Kajado are now selling their, uh, their tomatoes in the bush and they call the, the directors to come and give them money. This is our priority number one. All right, so far we've looked at achievements, we've looked at challenges in the initiative aimed at connecting Kenyans in the unserved and underserved areas. Stakeholders have identified the gaps in the initiative, they've identified the weaknesses, but what is the way forward? As uh, operators and contributors to the fund, we're really keen to know what's the next step. We need to have a joint engagement with all the stakeholders and it should be driven by CA. We are confident to be able to move forward with a faster pace to cover 99% of Kenyans who are unserved to the year 2022. That will be the focus of our next episode, which will be the final episode of this series, Connecting Kenyans. Remember, the discussion online continues and our hashtag is Connecting Kenyans. You can also watch this series on our YouTube channel. And that's how we wind up this show today on behalf of the entire Champs Media crew that made this production possible. And our broadcasting partner, KTN News, thank you so much for watching and see you again next time. license and regulate mobile telecom operators, TV and radio broadcasters, postal and courier operators. All this to open up a world of choice for you. Game Eco Juna CA, the communications authority of Kenya CA, opening your world.